Good afternoon, Good evening, folks. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled board meeting of the Cooper Recreation and Park District on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Ms. Jones. Thank you. To lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening, I'd like to welcome to the podium Heather Shelsky, who is our Recreation Supervisor too. And following the pledge, our Superintendent Chase Michelotti will provide an introduction. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, but to liberty and justice for all. Uh, good evening, Chair Danzel and members of the board. Uh, tonight, I'd like to recognize Heather Shelsky, our Recreation Supervisor 2 at the Neil Orchard Senior Activities Center, NOSAC. Heather has been in the recreation field for 24 years, 11 and a half with CRPD. In her time here, she has overseen a wide variety of senior and active adult activities and programs, which currently includes over 20 classes at NOSEC, 10 annual trips and excursions, Colette trips, the Green Thumb Garden and Lunch Program, and district-wide special use permits. Heather is also our CPRS District 2 Aging Section representative. Currently, Heather and her team are organizing and preparing for a robust spring class and program schedule, a trip to the Northern California Cherry Blossom Festival, and their next big luncheon, Fiesta, which includes a delicious Mexican-style feast. In addition to creating and running programs and coordinating classes, daily, Heather and her team continue to effectively manage a growing number of special use rental requests for large and at times complex events put on by the community. We're thrilled to have Heather as a longstanding and valued member of the CRPD recreation team and look forward to all the wonderful opportunities she and her team continue to provide to our local senior and active adult community members. Heather, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Board. Stephen. Yeah. Thank you. Let's move on uh, to action item. Or, um, Item number two, uh, standing action items. Thank you. This is the portion of our meeting with, where we deal with any AB 2449 requests, and seeing none, we'll list it as no action taken. Thank you, ma'am. So that means no uh, roll, roll call. Director Yearwood? Here. Director Mattis? Here. Secretary Langan? Here. Vice Chair Sloan? Here. Chair Danzel? Here. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Let's go on to item B, comments by public on non-agenda items. Thank you. I just want to welcome everyone on the Zoom call this evening and announce that we have one member of the public joining us this evening on Zoom. Sure. Members of the public may address the board on topics within the district's jurisdiction that are not listed on this agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes. It's a violation of state law for the board to discuss or take action on non-agenda items. Board members may only briefly ask clarifying questions or refer the matter to staff. And at this time, I see no requests. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Then let's move on to item C, presentations. Thank you. Item C1 is a presentation on the CRPD draft optimized plan. This is an informative presentation only. No action to be taken by the board of directors at this time. This is the opening of the public review period. And from Gates and Associates, I'd like to welcome Casey Case. Hi, good evening. Do I need to do anything with this? We're good. We're good. Okay, okay. And do I have to do anything with the screen or you guys can see what you're supposed to see? We can see. Great. <laughs> All right, so it's a pleasure to chat with you guys this evening. Um, I have had the opportunity to talk a little bit about this project before, so here I am again. Um, tonight, we are only discussing that this package, this draft document is going to be available for review. Yes. Yeah. Oh, presentation, presentation mode. Presentation. I did need to do something of use, didn't I? Um, slideshow from the beginning. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so we are going to make this draft document available for review, and I'm going to give it an overview tonight, update you guys since the last time I was able to see you and talk through the document itself. Um, so our, as I just mentioned, our effort tonight is to remind you what this project is, why I'm here, the efforts we've gone through since the last time I was able to chat with you guys, give an overview of the document and talk about the next steps. Um, so I am Casey Cates from Gates and Associates. Um, we are a landscape and planning firm. We were um, working on this project since 2022 with an awesome team from the district staff and also um, a team from Gates and Associates. It's been a pleasure working with you guys. Uh, we were brought in to work on the optimized plan and the purpose was to create a long-term document that helps to implement um, future projects that meet the current and future needs of residents. So we wanted it to be an action document that doesn't just sit on a shelf, but really creates a roadmap as things become available. Where do we start and what do we prioritize? So it was meant to be for a 15 year span. It was founded in robust community engagement. So we're not just making stuff up. We're making sure it's things people actually value and need. We evaluated existing conditions so we could come up with what those needs were. And we projected those things into what the population is likely to be and follow recreation trends so that the recommendations we make are in line with likely to, the, to see the needs that we're hoping to meet. And we also made sure that we were reasonable with maintenance and capital expectations and that we align with other local documents that may have an influence or a parallel purpose with this document as well. So we broke this project up into three rounds. We're currently in our final stages in round three. So we started by listening, what is it we need? What's working and not working? Then we had a round two that's really understanding what those existing conditions are and what needs to be better or different. And ultimately, we take the difference between those two and make recommendations of how to continue to be an awesome district in the future. So the last time I was able to chat with you guys, we were kind of finishing up our round one. So I wanted to close out that little update before I talk through the structure of the document. So in our round one community outreach, we had a ton of public engagement, which was really fun to see people excited to talk about their parks and their recreation opportunities. Uh, we were at several events, also had an online survey and had um, several stakeholder interviews as well. So lots of insights about specific the parks, big ideas, what people are looking for in their park and recreation district. Then we did a round two, which consisted of two pop-up events. And we asked people questions about what they prioritize. So we're like, we heard these things in round one. These are some of the amenities and such you'd like to see. But if we can't do everything at once, which is the purpose of a master plan, how do we begin to allocate what happens first and is most important in our community? So we had those two pop-up events where we had that conversation and also an online webinar for anyone who wasn't able to be there in person. So that process led to this understanding those existing conditions, having conversations with users, the community, and analyzing how it compared to other districts to then lead us to recommendations. What can we do to improve our existing parks, plan for future parks and everything in between? And then ultimately, how do we implement that? What does the action look like? How do we maintain it? How do we fund it? And what will those costs potentially be? So that leads us to our document. Um, so the document is structured into these sections. We have the executive summary, the introduction, community context, the needs assessment, the recommendations, and then the implementation, implementation plan. And again, it's meant to span for 15 years. So it's a long-term vision. So the first section, is an executive summary. This does a brief synopsis of each chapter within the document, giving a really abbreviated view of the highlights and the big important stuff that we took away from each chapter. So if you really want the cliff notes, you only have to read this, but there's a lot of really cool, fascinating stuff in the rest of it. It's like a cool, nearly 400 pages. So I get it if this is a chapter that you really, really like, because it's brief and to the point. Then we move into the introduction, which talks about the purpose of the plan, why are we here, what's it meant to do, what is the role of a parks district, and why do we care about this document in the first place. Then we move into the community context. So how did we gather this information? What did that outreach process look like? What did we hear? What other relevant documents did we make sure were explored and ran parallel to this document as well? 
And it was also understanding what is the demographic makeup of our community now and what is it likely to be in the future if those trends persist as we've been seeing them. And also, as I mentioned, what are some of the recreation trends that we're seeing in our local benchmarking cities? Also just in the national um, NRPA, so the national play recreation analysis as well. Like what are we seeing as popular that things are going to want? Let me give you a, um, it's pickleball. It's always pickleball. So with that, um, and then we went through needs assessment. So this is where we compare what is there to what would we like to have there. We're benchmarking again, those local districts and seeing where they lay in things. And sometimes we're right on the mark. Sometimes we're a little above, sometimes we're a little below. So this is still just information gathering, which will inform the goals and recommendations that we propose. We also did an analysis of the recreation programs, trying to understand what's offered. How does that compare to local districts? And then what is our cost recovery on those? And give a financial assessment, which really evaluated the health of the district and what needs to be um, compared to other communities as well. Then we come into our goals and recommendations. So we have goals that align with the um, high level goals of safety and inclusivity, sustainability, and also more specific as we get into each park. Study. So some of them are district wide goals of just things we need to be doing in the future to make sure things remain as vital and well used as they are, as well as things like these are a baseline standard that we need to perpetuate in parks moving forward. We also have classifications in this section where we designate parks as either neighborhood, community, or um, recreation facility. And there are minimum thresholds that need to be done for those kind of classifications in the future. And then we also make recommendations for parks that maybe don't exist yet. So if there are missing amenities within our needs assessment now, those are things we'd like to plan for in the future. And then implementation talks a lot about what happens first and what are the costs of those things. So how do we make these decisions as these funds become available or as a new developer comes in and they may be offering to build more amenities. So we talk about the prioritization of park improvements and other amenities that we need to see. We propose a maintenance schedule, which might have overarching things for all parks and the frequency that things need to be replaced or reevaluated. And we also talk about some of the potential funding strategies for that. So there's a lot of different conversations about where different um, cost recovery elements could come from. And then we also include an action plan. So this may be high level, district wide, we need to do these things, or also park specific, these are a priority. And we include project costs, um, whether it's on a square footage basis or an amenity basis, we have both of those in there as well. So that's a super fast, high level explanation of this 400 page document, um, but it's hopefully an easy and enjoyable read. We tried to make it very like graphic and bullet points where we can. So it's not a ton of words and really full of the meaty stuff and not a lot of other fluff. So that's where we are today. We will be posting this draft document on the website that's shared here. And there's an opportunity to provide comment on it through that as well. With that, um, oh, we will also be coming back to the board for final consideration on May 15th. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Questions I can answer. I'm happy to. Presentation. Director Miller. Uh, the only question I had for you is, is a sampling of 1,600 good in the scheme of this? I mean, our district's about a, what, 130,000 people now? Yeah, so, so. what we do, uh, what we try to do whenever we start off with community outreach is we kind of set parameters of like what qualifies as successful to us. So what we really tried to do was hit a... Um, slice of the community. So since we've done a little bit of history on what is the demographic and what are the primary park users, we felt like the, the slice that we got of the community was a good representation of that demographic spread. And we also, we liked that number. That's a pretty solid number um, of people coming out and giving their opinion and having conversations. The events that I was at, people were very engaged and passionate as well, which is really nice to see. People care and they're into it. Um, so how many pages is the, the actual document? The actual document is, you know, I keep saying it's 400 pages. There's tons of graphics and pictures and a lot of it. Um, there's almost like two to three pages for every park. So you don't necessarily have to look through and see like what restroom did they say needed to be added where? Because we show every park in existence and the recommendations for each one. So it's okay. a big bulk of it. it makes it a lot less intimidating if 
It was also an appendix. That's... And an appendix that is a supplemental document that has a lot of the background context and data of the outreach and our presentations and a lot of the um, supplemental supportive documentation is okay, there. Okay, yeah, because I heard it was like 780. <laughs> that's why. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like the average person can read uh, 40 pages an hour. And so at 780, that's 20 hours of reading. Right. And so my, my biggest concern is, you know, the same thing that you brought up, uh, Chair Yearwood, was about the, the the reach that we had. So I'm just more concerned about having um, the public have enough time to read this because it's a lot to read. And then just to read through it, to not even take notes. It could take, you know, 15 to 20 hours to read. Right. And then let alone try to go back and answer questions. Yeah, there may be the opportunity. And I mean, I highly recommend if somebody is able to, to read the whole thing. But if that is too much of a time commitment, I think it's possible the way we've structured the document to read the sections that are pertinent. So if somebody's really interested in like what's happening with the park nearest my home, they can read the recommendations and find that specific park. And they may not be as concerned as reading about the documents that we investigated to make sure they were incorporated in this in this plan, okay. right? So I, I'm hopeful that it's structured in a way that people can find the information that's relevant to them. And it doesn't necessarily need to be proofread because we did that a lot. I'm hopeful that that's part oh, of it. Oh, it's not just, <laughs> not, not, not just pretty, but it's just, right. you know, somebody that wants to dive into it and read it. Absolutely. Know, just want to make sure that they have enough time to make a comment, to, you know, voice their opinion, especially with, I mean, it's, I wish we would have had more. I mean, are we going to blast this out on social media that it's going to be out there and available and multiple times? Yeah, the plan is for us to post it on our website starting tomorrow morning. Okay. And then we will reach out to all of the people that have engaged with us through our stakeholder meetings, uh, as well as anyone that has the track record of, of providing survey information. Uh, we will send it out to everyone that's been a part of this okay. serve list. Uh, those are mostly the people that have been engaged with us, but ultimately it will live on our website uh, for, I think it's 32 days because we were going to close it, I believe, April 21st. Um, and so if you think that there's a need for us to extend that, uh, it's something we can consider um, if that's a concern of your guys's. I think it would probably be better to see what the, the totals are as we get closer to see if it's worth extending it or talking about it. Sure. Secretary Langan. Um, my my biggest question is, uh, and this might have to go to General Manager Larkin, um, just with the final board consideration of 515, is that that is a Monday. So, oh, it says May 15th. Yeah, May 15th. Yeah, May 15th. Yes. Is that when it closes no. or is that when it's we... a 30 day uh, public review period that we're opening up this evening. So it will close on April 21st. And then from there, we have some time that we need to take those comments and then be able to respond to those comments, record those comments. And then from there, it gives us another couple of weeks for them to come back and consider the approval of the final document. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Vice Chair Song. <laughs> Well, I'm curious about the date 2040 we have in this document. This optimized plan is supposed to take us to 2040, that's 16 years in the future. Mm -hmm. A lot of the choices that were made by the parents and their kids, kids were four, five, six years old, they're making choices on things that they want for the age that the kids are then. What about those kids when they get older? And do we take it to the next level where we're finding out what they would like to see as when their kids become adults kind of later on in their life? Or does it is as it do we look at it again in, in say seven years, eight years, 16 years is up and evaluate things because cultural diversity change. And a lot of times people want to see cricket, and I don't know if we've addressed cricket. Right. I, I can probably better answer that than Casey. <laughs> uh, so this is a snapshot in time, and that is the purpose of this master plan. There's no projecting out uh, what will exactly happen. But with this guiding document, 
Uh, the staff will be reviewing this periodically to make sure that uh, we're creating CIP plans associated with the direction of this document. We're looking at uh, new trends that may occur. Maybe there's a new sport that happens between now and 2040. Who knows, right? Uh, so we are keeping it as a tool, as a guide, but this is really a snapshot in time because we don't have a crystal ball, but we will be using it uh, instead of just putting it on the shelf and then taking it down in 2040 and updating it. The intentions were for us to use this absolutely as a guiding tool. So, and it is very specific. Uh, this isn't a cookie cutter type of document. Uh, this is very drilled down and specific to our uh, our district. So I think you guys will see that as you read through it, uh, the very specific directions that we've worked with the consultant on uh, to get us to where we are today. So I think the district did a really good job as well, trying to program in some flexible space as well, because that was a big thing we heard in our in our prediction, as you can call it, of recreation trends is it's like, we we know we don't know, right? So we need to try to make things be multi-use and have some flexibility. And ideally, we didn't only talk to people with young kids. We talked to seniors and we talked to some of the teens and, um, and do our best to really get a broad perspective of it. But I, I do think it is a moment in time. So it's, it's a fair question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to look at obviously the document yet, but over my time here, this is an optimized plan. We've had master plans before um, to answer some of the questions from some of the board. We, we talk about the comment period. I sat through a master plan. It took us two and a half years to do, and we received one comment, <laughs> and we put that out for 60 days. Um, and it's the same, same basic principle of what this is, and it was short. It was only 300 and so on, just under 300 pages. So it'll be interesting to see where this where this comes in. Um, we're not the only agency doing this right now. The city of Sacramento just put out their parks and rec also for up to 2040. So it was very interesting. I think I sent it to the general manager yeah. and and uh the director of parks the other day because I saw it and I was like, oh good, we're not the only ones doing this. That document though is the 700 and some odd pages. That one's ridiculous. I started reading it and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm glad I don't live there because I'm not gonna try and understand this. Um, but looking at their document and it's very easy to read and very understandable. If you you know live anywhere, you can grab it and go, okay, I'm looking at McKinley Park. Great. It talks about McKinley Park and what they need and what, you know, things and how they're going to grow. Um, but it's a living, breathing document. So it's just going to, we're going to learn from it. We're going to grow from it. Like general manager said, you know, pickleball 10 years ago didn't, you know, wasn't a big thing. Now it is, you know, and 10 years from now, we might have, you know, lawn darts again. Who knows? But you know what I'm saying? In a safe way. But that could be, you know, things change and we're, we're going to grow with it. So I'm very interested to spend the time to read this because I am, when it comes to Parks and Rec, that kind of geek that will sit there and read all 400 pages of this federal problem. And I, I'm not that person who reads 40 pages an hour. I'm the one that reads about 15 an hour because I, I sit there, I want to absorb it. So I'm I'm excited for this document. I can't wait to, you know, read it first thing tomorrow morning. I, I have, you know, other than hopping and hunting on Saturday, that's probably what I'll be doing is reading this document it. because it's, I can't wait to see what, what you know, the direction we're going to go. So, so what so, will look better with we'll coffee right stain on it too. You know? One or two. That circles on the cover, it's part of it. How does it, how does it factor in the, the cost estimates taking into consideration inflation and like we just recently, if you were building something using wood, was wood went away <laughs> right. the pandemic. You know, how, how does it factor in the costs? So what we've done is we took cost information from the projects that are currently being bid that we know of and looked at some of those costs, added inflation to some of those. And then in the appendix, which is the extra several hundred pages, there's some justification for those cost numbers. So if and when things are different, you can see how that line item was generated and adjust it accordingly as, as needed. So it take, it take, costs. takes into yeah. consideration the lifespan of... 16 years of stuff we, we put in 16 years ago, we're yes. going to replace. Right. Yes. 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 So, um, Shelby, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I will. Uh, <laughs> can we talk about how the public and the board can actually make comments 
uh, the appropriate way for them to uh, be received and our plan for that and how that those comments go to gates to process and then come back. Uh, can you kind of give us a little insight as to how folks can actually comment um, appropriately so that Gates gets that information? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so we talked a little bit about the outreach. We are doing social media and everything like that. Um, the public can make comments to us either through a Google, <clears throat> sorry, a Google form, um, which will be directed directly to the consultants. Um, or they can also email us, um, and so we'll forward that on to the consultant. So we'll have a full track record of anyone who comments and what those comments are. So, okay. so any questions? So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Um, I'm excited for this. So, oh, Thank but, you, Casey. I would want to say that the presentation here was much better than what we got in the packet because you know it was just scanned, so it was very hard to read. And, uh, okay. So it was nice to actually see it on the screen. So it was good. Yeah. Thank you. Let those 32 days start. Let the comment period open up. So thank you very much for the presentation, Ms. Case. And let's move on to... Oh, Chair I, Danzel, I just want to no, verify please. that we have no requests for public comment thank on that you. presentation. Sorry to the public for that. <laughs> um, let's move on to item D, committee reports. Thank you. Item D1 is a standing committee report for district policies on March 5th, and that's Chair Danzel and Secretary Lingen. Secretary Lingen, I'm going to turn it over to you to start and go through what you'd like, and then I'll catch up. Yeah, so it was a, it was a really good meeting, um, very insightful, uh, just to uh, know that, uh, you know, what's going on, no, um, everything and uh just to know that policies are changing uh all the time they don't stop just because we stop and so um there were uh four i believe that were laws so nothing we can really do about it but we it's good for us to know good to know what's in there um and um the other uh that was the, the sick leave uh, accrual accrual the uh, reproductive loss leave, drug and alcohol policy, and off-duty cannabis use. Um, and then the fifth one was the holidays. Um, and so just kind of benchmarking other agencies about getting one more floating holiday. Thank you. Um, it was a, a great meeting. Lots of questions got answered. Lots of things got discussed. Um, Got to got to love it when the when policies change because it's law. We don't have to do anything. Miss White just says, "Okay, this is we have to change this. Let's change this." Um, there was a um, policy was brought up. It was brand brand new. It was uh, brought up by myself, um, and it was just to make sure that basically the board of directors is doing what we need to do and that our vice chair and our chair of the district are um, have all their trainings and certifications done before they get to that that point. Plus, it also gives the, the district this transparency certificate that allows the district to look good because we're all under the same. We've all been trained the same. We all understand what's going on. Uh, we understand the Brown Act, things like that. Other than that, it was, you know, like I said, a great, great meeting. I'm looking over my notes and there was a lot of lot of pages to it. But like just like uh, Secretary Lang said, most of it was talking about laws that we had to change. So other than that, I don't have anything. So I guess we can move on to item E, consent calendar. Thank you. Consent calendar items are considered administratively routine and will be acted upon in one motion unless separate action on a specific item is necessary. The chairperson will consider any request for discussion on the items prior to approval of the consent calendar. This evening, we have five items for your consideration. And Chair Danzel, I would like to pull item E1 for a separate vote, please. Thank you, ma'am. Is there any member of the board that would like to pull any other item on the consent? Any on pub in the public? Any on Zoom? I see no requests. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve item E2 through E5, the consent calendar? I move the board of directors to approve consent calendar items E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5. 
can I get you, Secretary Langan, to um, amend that to just E2 oh, through right. E5? E1 has been pulled by. The... So if you would remake that motion for us, please. I move the Board of Directors uh, approve, uh, approve uh, consent calendar items E1, E3, oh, I'm sorry, E2. E2, E3, E4, and E5. Thank you. Do I hear a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Secretary Langdon and a a uh, second by Direct Director Mattis. Second. All those in favor? Director Yearwood. Aye. Director Mattis. Aye. Secretary Langdon. Aye. Vice Chair Sloan. Aye. Chair Danzel. Aye. Let's move back to item E1. Ms. Jones. Thank you. This item was pulled for a separate vote due to the absence of Director Mattis from the February 21st board meeting and requesting abstention. Thank you, ma'am. Hearing that, do I hear a motion for item E1? Chair Danzel, I'll make the motion that we approve item E1 of the consent calendar. Thank you. I have a motion by Director Yearwood. I'll second it. I have a second by Vice Chair Sloan. All those in favor? Director Yearwood? Aye. Director Mattis? Abstain. Secretary Langan? Aye. Vice Chair Sloan? Aye. Chair Danzel? Aye. Thank you, folks. Item F, public hearings. We have none tonight. Let's move on to item G, regular calendar items. Thank you. Item G1 is to discuss and take action on the future format for public forum at Cordova Recreation and Park District board meetings that are subject to the Ralph M. Brown Act. So as the district moved through and passed the pandemic, the district continued to offer Zoom as a means of transparency and ease of accessibility to the public. Zoom meetings, while offering many benefits, also can be vulnerable to Zoom bombing. It's, a time, it's timely for the board to consider and provide direction to staff on how public formats will be offered going forward. Eliminating Zoom subscription is not being recommended by staff at this time because it would be needed for future formats for AB 2449 requests. So the question before the board tonight is not whether or not to use Zoom, but rather it's does the board wish to keep offering live viewing and real-time online public comment. We have provided several options for the board's consideration. Option one is to keep the existing format and make no changes. This means that board meetings will continue to be hybrid with full in-person and Zoom participation. Public comment will be accepted in person on Zoom and in writing. Option two is to keep the live viewing, but switch to a webinar format. This allows public to view meetings virtually, but restricts verbal and chat comments to those attending in person. There is a fiscal impact associated with this option. This result will be board, me board meetings will continue to be hybrid and a webinar will be offered as a means of public viewing the meetings live. Public comment will be accepted in person and in writing. And then option three is to return to the pre-pandemic format of in-person only with no live viewing. Only the regular meetings, board meetings will be recorded and those recordings will be posted to the website and YouTube after the meeting. Board meetings will be in-person, public wishing to attend must do so in person only, and public comment will be accepted in person and in writing. So I'll turn it over to Chair Danzel. Great, thank you, Ms. Jones. Do I have any comments from the public on this? Do I have any, do I have? No request. No request. Okay, Director Gerwin, we'll start with you. Thoughts? Um, 97. I know this is, is this, this a, seems to be like a growing trend. I mean, we know I've heard the city had issues with it. Have many other agencies had issues with these Zoom bombs? Um, uh, I sat with uh, CARPD last week and the Bay Area had already been hit and uh, the Sacramento area is starting to be hit now. Um. 
I mean, I can go either way with option one or two. I don't particularly wish to go back to the old days where you just had to be here. Okay, Director Mattis. Yeah, so this is my wheelhouse. <laughs> That's what I do. So you do Zoom bombing? No, not Zoom bombing. Not, uh, <laughs> web streaming. So the options here are good. Now I think we should probably look at a fourth option. Okay. Um, is so we do the the in person setup that we have. Mark, with the setup back there with that software, can you stream to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter? So my recommendation is an option. The fourth option like that. So we still have it in person. It streams to YouTube, streams to uh, the social channels. There's no way to comment on it. All people can do in the public do is view it if they want to make. Um, and so you have to make this, you know, clear in the uh, board package and the board notices going forward. If you go with this option, that way they have to be here in person or with the Brown Act. What, what's the rules with uh, people emailing? Same, just written. Is it 24 hours in advance? Or nope. No, yes. so it's uh, up, up to, well, I think, 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock when you walk over. I usually the put 3 p.m. on meeting days just so I can process all the papers if they come in. Okay. But. And then with that, what, what, what you have back there, you can do like live production. So you can put lower thirds and graphics and everything on there and feed the presentation and all that. And what's also nice about that, too, is... Um, I see that you have like the cloud storage with YouTube. If you stream it on there, you produce it live, it's going on there. It's once the meeting's done, it's over. It's on, it's on YouTube. So what you produce and sent over there, it's done. It's all ready to go. So you don't have to do anything down the road unless there's like a closed session. Um, once it's up online, you can go in there, log into it and clip out the part where the board went into closed session. And you can put, you know, a, a time on the board went into the closed session at uh, eight o'clock. Board came out at nine o'clock and just put that in there. Uh, that's a much better way, I think, with doing it, because that way you still have people to do the actual requirements, because the video part of the Brown Act, it's just more of a benefit with the video, right? It's not required. Yeah, video and live streaming is not required by yeah. the Brown Act. Yeah. And so that's just an, an added bonus. So I think just, um, and plus, you know, you can shut off the comments so people can't leave comments. They can give you a thumbs up. That's about it <laughs> if they like your meeting. Um, but I think then that that's kind of the thing is that's what a lot of agencies are going to, a lot of way to reach the public that way. And I think, yeah, I think you still should be either an email comment or somebody in person. Okay. Would there be any costs associated with your fourth option? You already have the equipment. You already have everything now. It's just the only cost really is just setting up the graphics, which is a one-time deal. It's making lower third for each of us, lower third for staff when they're speaking, just to kind of add some benefit bonus to it. Because you can't do that in Zoom. Okay. Secretary Lane. Um, with option three, does that do anything with um, AB 2249 requests? No, we would handle it the same way. That's why we want to keep our Zoom subscription. Um, that's how we would handle that for remote board member attendance. So that's for board members and yeah. not the public. Yeah. So if we went with option three, there would be no more remote for us, correct? Yeah, that's sorry. Yeah. 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 No, the remote would still have to. The remote still would have to exist for us because of two two four four nine. Okay, okay, okay. So it, nothing, nothing would change on that for this this body. If one of us was missing, we could still zoom in, but wouldn't allow the public to see what's going on yeah. during this meeting, like as they are. And then that's currently. like the same thing too, like with with my option too. You still have the zoom option because you're probably still going to have speakers, the accountant, or you know the auditor stuff like that to bring in too. And that wouldn't affect them if we went to option three either. No, no. Yeah. We would keep all that as my understanding. Yeah, I know um, options one and two or uh, the one that Director Mattis is talking about are definitely interesting. Uh, it piqued my interest more than option three. Okay. Can I share song? Um, so right now, the the one person that's listening to us on Zoom could start singing a song right now and we can all have to hear it? No, 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 no. no. 
So they could, they could do during public comment, though. If we well, they, they could they could be turned on by us because it's their time to speak mm -hmm. and then right. take over and then sing a lovely song. Correct. Then we cannot cut them off. Well, they get their three minutes. They get their three minutes. And they could sing the preamble to the constitution. Correct. Or they could say whatever they say want whatever for they those want. three minutes, and we say we can't do anything. We can't cut it off. We can't mute them. We would give them a warning um, that they have to talk about things within the jurisdiction of the district. And if there was continued disruption, we would be able to Cut. stop their transmission. So, so if they do have some comment, they would have something to read, emails to you to be read or come here in person. Yes, correct. I think I'm leading towards the, the option four that uh, Director Mattis suggested it seems like she's knowledgeable in the uh in the field and uh i admire that so that's my thoughts okay um for me i i did talk to the one constituent who is very um always on and i'm glad that constituent is always on um and correct me if i'm wrong terry but you would like us to turn around and but yeah, you'd still like to be able to see this meeting live and um, and not with the comment. That doesn't matter to you in our conversation, but you would like to know what's going on live versus just waiting until it came out like the old days. Am I correct? She walked up. She's not the one on tonight. She's not the one. <laughs> um, it's the time. Oh, a, a comment in the chat saying correct. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that I, I got that, you know, the, the conversation correct and that everybody knows that I did talk, talk to uh, Terry Leinbach about, about that. So um, I think the biggest question um, is the cost that would go along with option four. And I don't know that we have that answer tonight or if we could even make that decision tonight, not knowing the cost. They addressed that. We don't know the cost. We don't, we don't know We don't know for sure. We got to make sure. Yeah. yeah. But so I, from what it sounds like, it's pretty much the same cost with the Zoom and everything else that you already have. So my question to the, the general manager and the clerk of the board and the board itself, not knowing those costs, is there a way for us to, being these three options at the moment, is there a way for us to, to vote on these three options and then next month after we get those costs, revisit it and change it from whatever is here to something? To, so if we were to, I'm going to just throw it out there, if we were to pick option two tonight, is there a way next month after we get the information to go, this is the cost associated with the more cost because option two I know does cost a few dollars more. Um, is there a way to to revisit that after? If the board likes, you can continue the item to yeah. the next meeting. Okay. Okay. And then we would just get clear direction from Mark as to what uh, exactly is the formats that you're requesting uh, so that we can compare it to the Zoom costs that we're uh, aware of at this point. Okay. So real quick on your, so it would be, we would still do Zoom, but we'd also do YouTube, Facebook, and other other social media platforms, or would it well, be? No, you, you would, the only time you would use Zoom is if one of us needed to be at okay. home doing So YouTube would basically become our... Uh, would be the, yeah, our the, channel. A, an electronic version for people to watch it from home kind of thing. Pretty much. And so, okay. like, you know, you, you schedule it ahead of time on the YouTube channel has a countdown. And so if you're a subscriber or something like that, you can you. And ask you can all send awesome. out to Facebook and Twitter. And if somebody has a subscription or a, uh, they'd like us or their LinkedIn, they'll get us paying that's live. You can watch, you can come in anytime of the meeting and watch it. If somebody came in a half an hour late, they can rewind it and watch it, watch it, watch it again. Like interesting, that's why I yeah. asked. Okay. And then once, once it's done, it's, it's, it's there. So you don't have to do anything down the road. Okay. So do we have to vote on continuing it? Or? That we would. So I would need, if, if that is the the where the board would like to go, I would need a motion to continue this well, well, next I'll, month. All right. I'll make the motion that we continue this item to next month. Uh, so we have an opportunity to investigate costs associated with uh, 
doing it via YouTube and potentially other sites. So I have a motion by Director Yearwood. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. I have a second by Vice Chair Sloan. All those in favor? Director Yearwood? Aye. Director Mattis? Aye. Secretary Langan? Aye. Vice Chair Sloan? Aye. Chair Danzel? Aye. Thank you, folks. Let's move on to on to item H, Board of Directors items. Thank you. Item H1, we have no topics. Item H2, training report. That is Director Mattis completed on-demand webinars through CSDA. Thank you. Does he need to speak on those or? Just in they general. Were, <laughs> no, they, they, were, they were interesting. It was fun. So it was, I think we had six to choose from. So it was enlightening. Okay. Then let's move on to item H2B community activity reports. And I will throw it all the way down there to Director Yearwood. And there is a lot this month, folks. So let's try and keep them short and concise if we can, please. Chapstick. Yeah, I got to, you know, warm it up. Uh, Madison's got two months worth, so let's definitely. <laughs> yeah, he still has the same amount as me, but that's all right. Um, so let's see here. Uh, March 9th uh, was opening day for uh, Rosemont Little League. Uh, I popped by there, uh, watched their parade, which was pretty cool. I wish uh, Rancho Little League and Colonel Girl Softball still could uh, do parades, but very nice. Some classic cars. Um, saw a few people I knew, ran into a board member there. Um, whoever sang the national anthem was phenomenal. Uh, uh, the park looked great. Everything looked great. There's a lot of folks out there having a great time. So then I hopped into the old uh, car and went over to uh, uh, Rancho Cordova Little League's opening, 70th season opening day, uh, a little later in the morning. Gosh, there were a lot of people there. There were so many people there. Um, uh, um, of course, ran into people I knew and all that uh, good stuff. So it was a, a great little event. They had a lot of uh, things going on for the kids. I'm surprised they didn't play any games, but uh, I, don't, I guess they don't do that. Um, then I popped over on, I like, like a couple weeks later, March uh, 13th, I went to the Folsom Cradle Unified School District State of Our Schools, a, a very interesting um, uh, event, uh, a lot of great stuff. I was happy to see that Mills Middle School, my alma mater, has a drum line now. So, um, but uh, very informative, uh, some nice information, uh, the uh Superintendent is retiring, so they're going to start their search for her replacement here shortly. Uh, and then last but not least, this uh, last Saturday, the 16th, I hopped over to Girdover Girl Softball's uh, 59th opening day. Um, it's a great event. Uh, I met the mom of Rancher Cordova, uh, a.k.a. Linda Budge. Just kidding. Right. Anybody knows Rod Barber? Rod says some 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 interesting things. So, uh, but it was a great event. Uh, good turnout. The weather was perfect. Um, and um, that's pretty much all I have. Great. Thank you, Director Mattis. Um, yeah, we attended the LAFCO back in January. That was a, an extension from the one that was canceled in October of last year. Um, because it fell on Halloween. So we just couldn't get scheduling right. So we moved it to, you know, had it in January. Uh, it was kind of a, a lost cause because there was a bunch of stuff that was on the agenda. And when we showed up, the person wasn't there. Yeah. So there was a lot of things removed. So we spent a lot of time talking and sharing. And so one of them, I brought up our optimization plan. And so that was great. So that was good. So a lot of agencies were good to hear that. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Um, spoke at a uh, Gold River uh, Cub Scout meeting. They had to meet a requirement to speak to uh, an elected official. So I went in there and spoke to them about the position and most of it was questions by the parents. So that, that, that was good <laughs> about parks. Um, submitted my form 700 and um, attended the Arbor Day uh, tree planting event, which was really good over there at Dave uh, Roberts Community Park. And brought my kids with me, so that was that was good. And we planted was it twenty four twenty four trees, so that was that park definitely can use them. So it's going to be nice. Did we find out if that one that was by us did that one get replaced or 
No. Did that one make it? Uh, I think it's making it. I don't think that <laughs> we would have known if it was going to die that soon. Yeah. Uh, so wait until next year. We'll find out if we'll find it makes out. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting, though, because it was really twisted around. And yeah. Somebody dropped quite, quite the truck? education about it. No, it was like the root twisted and grew inside. So they had to cut it oh. there. So. But it was just it was just interesting, kind of just overhearing the the the, the process of planting a tree. I never never thought of that. So when I went home, I had to transplant my wife's lemon tree to a bigger pot. So I made sure you know moved it around, and moved it over. The things you learn being right. a park district director. Um, Secretary Lang. Yeah. So uh, March seventh. Uh, attended the Rosemont Community Association meeting, uh, really just gave a report on uh, the sports courts out there, at Rosemont uh, Community Park. And uh, what I can say is that everyone's eager, eager for it to, to be finished. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of excitement out there about that. So that's great to hear. And then um, March 9th, Rosemont Little League opening day. Um, I'm one of the assistant coaches uh, for my son's team. Um, so I was involved in the parade. It's always a fun thing to do. Um, had just uh, classic cars, fire truck, police cars, just cool things that going on. There's uh, 180 players this year. So that's really good um, for us. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just fun to be out there, be at the park. Um, and then also just to be able to um, just be out there with the community and, and hear what they have to say. Um, and yeah, my son loves baseball so much that I was there from like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, watching baseball. But I will say that he gets that from me. So, um, but yeah, it's a great time. Great. Thank you. How come we don't have the uh, anniversary for Rosemont? Literally. We had Little League 70th, the girls softball 59th. What, what, what anniversary did uh, Rick Mott celebrate? That's a great question. <laughs> Just going to continue that to the next, next meeting. Yeah, next meeting. Right. We'll want that answer next next, next, give month, next month, Secretary Gillian. Yes, yes, sir. Vice Chair Sloan, your report for the month, please. Please do not. February 27th, I attended the BRECA meeting. Um, just to give you a heads up, I think it's in the packet here. The Easter egg hunt for breakfast is going to be March 30th at 10.30 a.m. Um, we also discussed the Corps of Engineering uh, plan for this using the Larchmont Community Park as their stage er staging area. They're very concerned about that. I told them that uh, we are going to uh, have a walkthrough with um, staff here and that I would report back after I had that walkthrough. Let them know. Um, on um, Tuesday, March 5th, I attended the Rancho Cordova Athletic Association meeting, and they're currently in the process of creating a uh, code of conduct signage that would be put in every, one, every dugout or in every play area around the uh, district and the school district and whatever parts that are in our property, signage putting in the, the, at the uh, at all from at the major's field, at least two signs there. So uh, I'll keep you posted on on that. Next thing on Friday, March 8th, I attended the 24th Annual Community Volunteer Awards. Um, I just want to say that I that I was part of an organization that was honored. It was Rancho Cordova Arts. And um, I was, it was a nice event, very nice event. Um, on Saturday, March 9th, I attended the Rancho Cordova Little League 70th opening day. They had the youngest player and oldest player. The youngest player would pitch the oldest uh, would pitch to the oldest player. The youngest player is three years old. And the oldest was 14. Can you imagine? I don't imagine. I probably would have been really good if I started at three years old. Well, my dad would have put a golf club in my hand instead. <laughs> Um, but it was a nice event. The 70th was it's it was a big deal for them. They didn't have games scheduled because they wanted kids to have a enjoy all the festivities that they had planned. Um let's see, on uh that same day I did go over to College Glen Little League where my kids played, and I also did walk stop by uh Rosemont and see what was going on. 
On Tuesday, March uh, 12th, the CARPD board met. Uh, we had a board meeting. And um, on the next and on the next day, we went to the Capitol. The board meeting, we discussed items such as the upcoming conference. And at that board meeting, we we chose we elected um, uh, as uh, Lori Wilson, Assembly Member Lori Wilson, is our Legislator of the Year, and hopefully that person will be at our conference in May. We met with a lot of other legislators, legislative people at the Capitol. We, you know, learned about one thing that we learned about is the state budgets, well, a big deficit there. So we're not expecting very easy to get state bonds. But there is a lot, there were some opportunities in the federal level that I had given a piece of paper to our general manager to explore most federal funding grant opportunities. On the next one would be Wednesday, March 13th. No, that's the same one. Wednesday, March 13th. That same night, we came back to Roseville and um, I attended the C CPRS um, Volunteer Awards Banquet where uh, Gianni Giappetti, uh, I guess it's Giappetti, Giappetti, was uh, honored uh, for the his. Uh, Viewing binoculars at the Heron Landing Park. I thought it was a great thing to see uh, him and his family there, and they really uh, enjoyed the you know, um, the festivities. Was that Wood Creek uh, Country Club? Rock Rockland? I think that was Rockland. Next one, Thursday, March fourteenth. Uh, I attended the Spring Wellness Potluck over at Hagen Park, and we collected a lot of cans. Unfortunately, the um, the the was it the senior center and the and the uh, uh, the golf course and some other facility won the total of cans that came in. Um, there was a lot. We gave a lot to the food locker. You should, I, I I can't. I like to see the picture. I know, I, I haven't seen it yet unless it's been posted. I just didn't notice it. The next thing was on Saturday, March sixteenth. I attended the the girls softball. It's their 59th year next year will be the big 6-0 and uh on the next one was tuesday march 19th it was just yesterday i attended the it takes of lincoln village community meeting and um our the manager uh micah runner rancho cordova was discussing the opportunity of becoming a, um, a city council member and um it was a it was a, it was an interesting uh, enlightening uh, thing because I, I didn't realize what was so um, so so involved with that. Um, one person did um, ask about the possibility of having some type of an archery range at in Lincoln Village Park, and I I didn't know I didn't know what to tell them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I said that's kind of a, the liability would be kind of off the chart, yeah, but. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Unless they use the little rubber tips with the we'll see what the optimized plan has to say. <laughs> okay. That's that's it. And then, Thank you. Um, my list is a little little shorter. Um, Arbor Day tree uh, tree planting, the uh, great great event. Like Eric Mata said, twenty four trees. Um, it was Arbor Day, so the city presented us with a Arbor Day uh, proclamation. Um, March fifth. I had CARPD conference committee. Conference is coming up quick for us. The um, this year the sponsorship dollars are the largest they've ever been, which is which is great for us. The attendance right now we've got um, eighteen districts coming, um, so we're still pushing pushing that up. Uh, we heard comment that the reason, and I actually heard this at the board meeting on the twelfth, um, that the a lot of Districts hadn't made up their minds because they weren't sure what was going to be covered in the conference. So they wanted to know what was going to happen at conference before they showed up and spent their money. So that got out and numbers have gone up since then. Um, 
13th, uh, myself and Vice Chair Sloan, both being on the board of directors of CARPD, uh, did our capital visit, met with assembly members and state parks, talk about what's going on. Uh, CARPD is, uh, has a, is, has our name on a bill to help with statewide with remote meetings for smaller commissions, things like that. In a sense, our PMRID committees, um, but in more rural areas where they might not be able to drive, you know, 45 minutes to, to a place to sit down and have a meeting, but still to give them the opportunity to have a Zoom meeting and things like that, because currently that that's going away at the state level. They don't want, they want everybody to be together again now that COVID's over. Um, but we look at it in an organization that it actually gives an opportunity for younger people to get involved that don't have, you know, could you imagine spending 40 minutes, 45 minutes driving to a meeting at 25 years old because you want to get involved in government in between your schooling, this, that, and the other, and then at 45 minutes back. So it just gives them an opportunity or it gives, you know, seniors an opportunity to still be involved in their commissions and things like that throughout the state um and not have to travel so that's that's a bill that we're we're working on with uh assemblywoman pachenko and she's got it through the assembly now it's onto the senate we'll see how that goes um things have changed this year at the capitol so we'll see um after that as vice chair Sloan said uh attended uh cprs district two awards banquet yes um so a young man in our district did earn an award but also just besides that we've got so our staff, the great staff that we do have here at the district, that are members of that board of directors, which is a phenomenal thing. I think vice president, I don't remember all the positions, vice president, secretary. Uh, incoming president. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, incoming president. And then we've got members that sit on other committees within that board of directors. So it's really great that our staff is capable enough to be out there and represent us along with uh, area two with uh uh, CPRS. And then the next day I did attend the potluck. I will leave it at that. It's well attended. The staff is always there. You know, um, things are, some things are changing, which is, which is a good thing. Some programs um, with the staff at the staff level. And I won't take anybody's thunder on that. I'll let other people kill things. Um, but uh <laughs> But, you know, it's always great sitting with staff and, and, and getting to talk to them, and, you know, and know what's going on. And I will let staff talk about that in their reports on other things that have happened at that event. So I am done there. Let's go on to item C, comments by staff on non-agenda items. Thank you, item I-1 is the district-wide monthly progress report for March. I'll turn it over to General Manager Larkin. Well, thanks, Clerk Jones. Uh, I always love to. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So uh, this month I was able to meet with representatives from Senator Ashby's office uh, to educate and ask for support on any funding opportunities to continue to make improvements uh, in the area that she has uh, a district uh, around, which is the Rosemont area. Uh, so that was great to connect with them and get them to have us be on their radar, to look out for us for potential funding opportunities. I also received a check uh, donation from the Rancho Cordova Rotary Club in support of our CRPD Hoppin' and Hunting at Hagen event. So I joined them for a presentation and giving them updates on the district, and we appreciated their $500 donation and their continued volunteerism at our event. Great group of people. So. Uh, very happy about that. The all staff wellness potluck. Yes, it was one of the larger ones we've had. Uh, people were definitely hungry. <laughs> so um, we did collect canned food and we collected 720 canned food items. Uh, 21 actually, one was still in my car when I emptied it out. So uh, we, we donated those to the food locker on Friday. Uh, they were overjoyed with the delivery of such a large amount of donations. So fantastic uh, uh, going with the staff. Apparently, pizza is a motivator. And so the group that brought in the most cans was the Senior Center, Mather Sports Center, and the golf course. So they'll be getting a pizza party for their win this time. 
Uh, <laughs> nah. What was the difference? In? Uh, so it was pretty, I mean, they kind of just killed it. The, the second place was like 240 cans and they were at like three something, 360 or something. So job well done. And I even knew about that before when I was serving food at St. Patrick's Day the day before I looked in the back office on four boxes, came back here. I was like, more food. So anyway, <laughs> next time, next time. Uh, I did have an opportunity to attend Visit Rancho Cordova's destination event uh, yesterday, actually. It was an opportunity for board members to go out to different tourist attractions in the area. So we ended up going to the Nimbus Fish Hatchery. Uh, took a tour of that, and then from there we went to uh, what they called the Nimbus area, uh, which is Fort Rock Brewery and the escape room. Uh, we had a facilitator there talking about uh, putting on our tourism hats and seeing uh, what are some of the benefits and maybe core packages that we could uh, help them offer in the community going forward. So it was a really great event. They had approximately, I'd say about 15 different folks, mostly ho hoteliers. Uh, we had someone from the air show, uh, myself, and um, it was a great day just to connect and brainstorm some ideas to draw some more people into our community as tourists. Uh, the sexual harassment prevention training, all board members are current until 2025. There is no requirement to attend the training offered at this year's CARPD annual conference. If you would like to, you're more than welcome, but I would not suggest it. Um, Mark Jones and Denise Daniels are our new in-house California Notary Publics. They uh, passed their exam and they now have that service in-house. We used to have to go to FedEx or have maybe some city folks come and help us notarize documents. So congratulations to those two. Uh, the test was pretty hard from what I hear. And so we're just very proud and happy that we now have that service in-house. So congratulations to Denise and Danielle. Uh, for our CIP project updates, we have 42 projects uh, this year, 26 are completed and six are activated and in progress, which is fantastic. Jim has been doing, and his staff have been doing an outstanding job uh, getting those projects done. Uh, we also had Human Resources did an intensive workshop. They did a training on effectively managing leaves of absence and reasonable accommodations to learn their best practices, new laws, and then to ensure the district is following all those new requirements. So thank you for that. It's keeping us uh, in our best practices. Uh, let's see. We are working on a couple of different projects with the city. Uh, one being the sidewalk extension project down to the American River. Uh, they are phasing this project into two. Uh, the first phase will happen this summer, and that phase goes from Coloma down Chase to where the parking lot ends at the school district. Uh, so that'll be completed in the summer of 2024. The project uh, phase two, which affects us the most, is the summer of 2025. I think we planned it maybe two days before the 4th of July. I'm so praying, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but for us to uh, have that sidewalk be extended, cross over the intersection of where that four-way stop is, and then go down to the left side of the entrance into Higgin Community Park and do a nice, nice new sidewalk all the way out to the American River. So that's an exciting project. Uh, staff have also been working on uh, the possibility of bringing a uh, dog park to the White Rock Community Park. Uh, the city has received a grant. Uh, they've done some community outreach in that neighborhood, and they will be bringing that project along with some other projects for consideration uh, to the city council on April 2nd. Uh, if it is funded, we will do a joint use agreement, an interagency agreement, actually, uh, and then go back out to community outreach for that neighborhood and ensure we have a conceptual design and something that meets their, their needs and interests. So uh, we will see how that goes. Uh, we are anticipating a mid-April uh, opening the new sports courts at Rosemont Community Park to the public. Uh, we finally got the Tesco panels. The first small panel arrived this week. 
We have a large panel that we still need to uh, have arrive and then we'll install. Uh, the walkthrough final inspections are scheduled for April 2nd. Uh, we still need some time if there are things that we find that are not completed. Uh, so we're anticipating a open to the public fences down in mid-April. So that's exciting news as well. Uh, we talked uh, in the past about the American River Levee Project. Uh, they had some significant public outreach. Uh, and so for they're going to need to respond to the public's uh, questions that they had. Uh, they're still in the process of formulating those responses. They'll have to go back out to the public and give a formal presentation responding to that. So there is a delay. Uh, there is still a plan for us to tour our board for the large park community uh, uh, park area that they're looking to use to propose a staging area. Uh, so more to come on that. Um, but there is a bit of a delay due to the robust community interest and questions that they need to respond to before we do that. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jill, our amazing Parks and Recreation Director. Well, thank you. Do they have any more? Is that the only public comment section they had that one webinar that didn't go very well? Uh, they've had a three, I believe. So that was the last of the three that we joined okay and i think they had one the night earlier and then they had one early on so this that last one we all attended was the most highly attended um but from that as you know there was numerous questions and so they actually received those questions they opened it up for a public comment period uh they received all the questions and they're in the process of responding to them but i believe they're planning on going back out for a public response meeting and i will let you all know once we hear about that yeah it may be one and maybe two i'm not exactly sure but i don't think they know yet uh they're still in the process of responding so thank you yeah i'll, I'll give you more information as i find out all right so as you can see from the report lots going on in the parks and recreation world um just wanted to highlight a few aquatics aquatic season is back which is awesome so the cordova community pool um open to the cordova high school swim team they use the pool in the spring for their season so we're excited that they have 30 uh registered and rostered uh swimmers this year which is outstanding we also um, have our registrations for swim teams open as well as the clinics that start april 1st and then our spring um, lessons start april 22nd so really happy to see that our pool is being uh, used and activated now we just need to get the warm weather to go along with uh, the pool and then um, if you uh, had an opportunity to read that our um, garden over at NOSAC has been um, demolished because we are replacing it with a brand new garden and some beds during the uh, spring day of service, which is coming up on May 18th. So Heather and her team and Martin Fonseca and his team um, did a little bit of a pre-demo so that it makes it a little bit easier for the volunteers on May 18th to rebuild um, that garden. But we are super excited to be able to do that. I know Heather's been wanting to, to take on this project for a while and it, it's needed. Um, we do obviously use that garden um, every single year and Heather and her team use it for the Green Thumb Lunches that are a very successful program that obviously see our community really enjoys. So we're looking forward to the spring day of service on May 18th. Again, hoping all of you will be able to make it out, but I'll cover that in a second. So Heather, congratulations for finally getting that project off your long list of things to do. Cool. Um, and then with that, I'll go over the special event invitation uh, page. So we do have hopping and hunting this Saturday at Hagen Community Park and the Cordova Community Pool. So there will be pool use this year. It is from 11 a.m. to 1, and it is rain or shine, because we know that the rain is coming, but we have already planned for that. So if it does rain, if it's wet, whatever it may be, uh, Nicole and her staff have a backup plan. Pool's wet anyhow, so it doesn't matter if it's raining. We just encourage the little ones to come in their little rain boots and have a really great time. So rain or shine this Saturday. Hope to see you all out there. Creek Week cleanup on Sunday is still on. We've got about uh, 10 participants um, it, making sure that we are able to clean up around the Cordova Creek at Hagen Community Park on Sunday from 10 to noon. 
Then, as mentioned before by Vice Chairperson Rick Salone, BRCA has their Easter egg hunt at Riviera East Park on Sunday, excuse me, on Saturday, March 30th at 10.30 a.m. We have the Senior Resource Fair at NOSAC at 1 to 3 on April 24th. And then the Kids Day in the Park, which is hosted by the Cordova Community Council, which basically takes up most of Hagen Community Park that day, will be on Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then there's that big day, that big day of spring day of service. So hopefully you guys are holding that date. It is hosted by the city of Rancho Cordova, and it's going to be various locations throughout uh, the city. We obviously have a few locations throughout CRPD where we are going to be doing volunteer projects. We have one at NOSAC that I just mentioned. We have a couple of tree plantings as well as some projects at Hagen. Um, the details did come out uh, via social today. If you haven't had a chance to see them, we've also shared that social media post on our um, on our social. And what I will do is I will put together um, pretty, pretty, pretty much an invite and I'll invite you all to that day of service now that we have wrapped up the final details for it. Um, so with that, that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Let's move on to item J, informational items. Thank you, item J1 is the articles, correspondence, and public outreach. We have the two newsletters, and J2 is your calendar. Thank you, ma'am. Let's move on to final item of tonight, item K, adjournment. <laughs> So at this time, folks, we have reached the point where we will be adjourning to our next regular board meeting of the Board of Directors of the Clearover Recreation Park District on Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, 6.30 p.m. Thank you, folks.